either number one, you're not vulnerable and actually showing who you really are and giving your partner an opportunity to actually get to know you mm-hmm. with a deep conversation or whatever. Or number two, your partner doesn't want to go to the depths. They don't want to get to know you. They want to stay on the surface. They don't want to face themselves. And honestly, it takes two people to tango when it comes to the truth. If you're not bringing your truth into the relationship, you're never really ever going to feel seen. You're never going to feel understood and you're never going to feel valued. Conscious couples, business partners, and singles committed to attracting their dream partner. Welcome to the Conscious Couples podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me, it's about the the we. we. Conscious couples and individuals from all over the world, welcome back to the one and only Conscious Couples podcast for episode number 76, It Takes Two to Tango. And this is not an episode about dancing. (laughs) Uh, As always, thank you so much to the Next Level Podcast Productions team for audio, video, everything for producing this show and I believe 46 others, maybe even more than that now because they are rocking and rolling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you for prioritizing us above everyone else. I'm kidding. Uh, All right, so as always, sweetheart, what is your intention for today's tango episode? My tango intention for this tango episode is to help our listeners partner with vulnerability and courage to feel seen in their relationships. I know between... You and I, there's been a lot of tangoing in these specific areas of courage and of vulnerability. And I really do believe that it takes these two concepts. And I think I see a triad over there. So there's probably one more that you're going to bring into this episode. But Are I really, you peeking at my remark? I am. I'm sneaking peeks. So we can tango <laughs> or pe- now or peeking later. Peeking sneaks, as we call it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really do believe that those are absolutely essential for building a very strong, a very stable, and a very healthy relationship. All right. So imagine you and your partner are doing the tango. I personally have never done the tango, but I think I've seen it done. And it takes two to tango is a saying that is based in actually dancing. And in a relationship, if you want to be on a team and you want to be effective at dancing, you have, it takes both. Mm -hmm. You can't just have one good dancer. And I know that I've been in past relationships where I felt like I was the only good dancer. And then I felt like my partner in some things was a better dancer than me. And so who's leading the tango? Who's this, that, and the other thing? That's the main concept here is that are you and your partner on the same page? Do you see each other? Do you understand each other? Do you value each other? Mm. So the triad that Emilia mentioned on my remarkable when she was sneaking peeks or peeking sneaks depending on how you look at it (laughs) she looks at the camera uh sneakily (laughs) and the triad is something that we created for one of our relationship talks coaching events where it's the triad of belonging you've studied belonging a lot more than i have although i am starting to understand as now we have a 16 person team at nlu the amount of belonging as a craving in the human species is wild like you can have You can think of any company you've worked for. You can think of any friend group. You can think of your family, fam bam, as we call it on this on this uh, podcast. And what is your sense of belonging? Do you feel like the black sheep? Do you feel like the ugly duckling? Do you feel like, insert analogy here, do you feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself? Do you feel like you're a part of the team? Think of sports teams. Think of basketball or soccer or whatever sports you played growing up. There's a sense of belonging at this triad. Number one, feeling seen. Number two, feeling understood. And number three, feeling valued. And it's in that syntax for a reason. Number one is seen because you can't, number two is understood. You cannot feel understood until you are first seen. And you cannot be truly valued at your true value until you're understood. Mm. So it's seen, understood, valued. So Everyone listening, please take a moment, if you're not driving, 
and even if you are driving, you can think about this, okay? Zero to 10, how, f- how seen do you feel by your intimate partner? Uh, do you want to answer, love, for, to lead by example? <laughs> <laughs> I can. Um, <clears throat> I would say that I feel more seen in our relationship than I've ever felt in an intimate relationship. And also in a friendship, in any other relationship for that matter. Okay, so zero to ten, and you do say, not have to sugarcoat. By I would the way. say I would say nine out of ten. Nine. Yeah. Okay. So nine. So please, I'll I'll write that down. Nine. And again, for you out there listening, whatever your number is, there's nothing to be ashamed of here. This is just an assessment. Mm-hmm. Number two, understood. How understood do you feel in your intimate relationship? <clears throat> I would say an 8.5. 8.5. Okay, not my best score, but we're we're doing it. I'm kidding. Number three, how valued do you feel? I would say this is a 10. Okay, it's interesting. So the point that I was going to make, I don't know if it works for us, <laughs> uh, was that you can only feel valued to the extent that you feel seen and understood. Mm. And so there's something there that I think is interesting and maybe you can go into sharing your perspective. But if let's say you had a six for seen and a five for understood and a four for valued, that would make a little more sense to me Mm. because I obviously cannot value you at the level of your true value unless I first see you for the truth and understand you at the deepest level. And we've all heard that quote, maybe it's on Instagram or maybe it's, you know, on Google or, or in passing where you can only meet someone else to the extent that you've met yourself. Mm-hmm. So if I've only gone to le- level three within the depths of my own mind, body, heart, and soul, I can only meet Emilia at level three. And I know you've been with some shallow men, not to try to call you out here, but you've been with shallow men. What does it mean to be shallow? It means you haven't met yourself or others at deep level- levels, which is going to get us to our main point of this episode, which is the power of vulnerability. Mm. so um can you articulate for us what it felt like in the past sweetheart to not feel seen not feel understood and not feel valued because you were with a man who was living on the surface um i would say that the shell was a really great word to describe it i would say that um to the tango analogy it kind of feels like you're dancing alone on the dance floor all the time trying to pull your partner up and them saying like no, no thanks, you're stupid. Like, why would I ever dance? Kind of like that feeling. That's what it feels like. Can you give us an but example? I, would you be willing? Um, An example where you wanted to deepen the relationship or or grow together in something and, and your partner wasn't open to it? I would say uh, many times I've had partners and relationships outside of the intimate realm that whenever I would want to go deeper in like a deep conversation growth conversation really analyze a moment really um, get deeper into the experience that we had together we've called them formerly on this podcast an experience review Mm -hmm. Um, I've had partners say like you're overthinking it stop you know you're thinking way too much like stop going into the deep end of that I'm like we really don't need to be analyzing these things like it is what it is some of those sentiments that would kind of drive me off the deep end so talk about feeling alone in a corner um I think like in a dark cold corner that's what it feels like to be very alone in your intimate relationship when you do not feel seen heard understood and valued and in those moments, Emilia was trying to connect with mm-hmm. herself and with her partner or family or friend in this scenario. And I've been told the same thing. Alan, you think too much. Alan, you analyze everything. When in reality, what if you think too little? What if, what if you don't analyze enough? Mm. What if I'm trying to grow and learn and understand myself at a deeper level so that I can get to the next level? Mm. And I've, I've had the same thing said to me. You know, I had one ex-partner and she was joking, but also saying this somewhat truthful is like dating you is like dating a Stairmaster. Like Mm -hmm. you're always going. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And at the time, what she meant by that is I'm always growing. I was reading books on books on books and all that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to keep exploring myself and others and the world and dreams and goals and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I felt very unseen and underappreciated in that relationship. And in hindsight, I can understand why they also felt that way because we didn't have a ton of core values in common. So mm-hmm. what I want to bring to the listeners here, and I want to ask you this because I want us to lead by example, is have you ever felt like I didn't want to explore those things with you? No. Have I ever said you think too much? No. Or you analyze too much? No. So for the listeners, and this is really what I wanted to try to bring up for them, because I am just, this podcast is about the truth. This is about facing the uncomfortable truth. And Mm -hmm. if you have a partner who thinks you think too much, thinks you analyze too much, you know, who doesn't want to grow and explore these things, doesn't want to listen to these episodes, doesn't want to come to relationship talks events, most likely you're in a relationship that doesn't have a strong sense of belonging and therefore not a strong foundation to build your future on. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be worked on, but you're going to have to bring it up. And so Emilia and I, at the beginning of our relationship, we had love languages. And if you are curious, by the way, we can put a link in the show notes to our 25 love languages. It's conscious love languages assessment. And it's pretty overwhelming. So, you know, play at your own risk here. Mm. But we had deep conversations on there. Yeah. And for Emilia and I, deep conversations were our number one love language at the beginning of our relationship. And we eventually scratched that from the whiteboard completely because basically that's what we do all the time. That's a given now. And so at the end of the day, what we wanted to talk about on this episode was the power of vulnerability. If you don't feel seen, there's two possible outcomes. Either number one, you're not vulnerable and actually showing who you really are and giving your partner an opportunity to actually get to know you Mm -hmm. with a deep conversation or whatever. Or number two, your partner doesn't want to go to the depths. They don't want to get to know you. They want to stay on the surface. They don't want to face themselves. And then there is a third, which is basically maybe you see yourself inaccurately. If you're listening to this show, I'm assuming you're in the pursuit of growth and development and truth. So you most likely are ahead of your partner in the growth journey. And I'm just not going to sugarcoat that, Mm. you know, and I've been there a thousand times. And in hindsight, there's certain things that I definitely didn't understand, certainly vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, it's very clear that I was a lot more of the explorer than my past partners. And now I'm with Emilia where, quite frankly, she is exploring and contemplating and contemplating and learning more than I am Mm -hmm. or as much. And it is a different life. So, um, you know. (laughs) Yeah. What I was going to say is um, I think that there's a huge component of this that I'd like to touch on for our listeners, which is the courage to actually be heard. I know that a lot of our listeners struggle with actually bringing, say, for example, they are maybe the more growth oriented. Maybe they are the person that has more awareness. They struggle to bring what their truth is back into the relationship. And I think that a lot of couples actually don't feel heard, don't feel understood, and don't feel valued in their relationship because of that component. So yes, everything that you said, the only thing that I would add for our listeners is the courage to be heard. It requires something of you. It requires you to yes, show up in your vulnerability, but it's a whole different extension of yourself. It requires you going in and understanding what is your truth and then bringing that truth to your partner, which I know personally can be absolutely terrifying. Well, because you're risking being hurt. You're, you're risking, risking being hurting exposed. your partner yes. too. Yeah. And I, so I think it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Courage to to express your truth. We call them truth bullets. We call them truth cannons. We call them truth pebbles. Pre- something, preferably truth pebbles. Pre- <laughs> yes, exactly. Which, which really is the concept of understanding, you know, whenever you have a conversation with your partner or with someone, you kind of have that like inkling of truth that kind of comes to you after. Well, even right there with you, you didn't want to say 8.5 but you knew that you wanted to be honest because the 8.5 might hurt my feelings. The fact that you only feel understood at an 8.5, but now because I have a growth mindset, I can learn you more Yeah, and we can live in the truth together yes. rather than saying, Oh, 10, 10, 10. It's a total of 10. You're, you understand me at the deepest level. It's like, <laughs> okay. The, yeah. So our call with Alan and Amelia was just incredibly valuable. It was really cool to see that in just one session, we were able to go so deep and to, cover so many topics and without going too much into the troubles without getting depressive or negative or anything like that 
And it was just amazing to see that at the end of the call, we were able to hop off the call with way more resources and way better equipped to build trust and to resolve our conflicts more effectively in the future than we were to begin with. So we got a lot of value from it and way more than we were both expecting. Not because we had low expectations, but because they really over delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really just great to be able to chat with someone and just connect with another couple that's really interested in, you know, growth and becoming better people and becoming better partners. So it was just really fun to actually be able to connect with someone that's really invested in each other and the relationship and everything. Yeah, they felt like really good friends that happen to be very wise. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. you We're know. so fearful to your belonging point earlier. We're so fearful of rejection as a human species. So when we can make space for the truth and when we can deliver that in a cute little truth pebble, like I want everyone to imagine like this cute little golden like rock. It's like a small little pebble that you hold in your hand. It's not going to like destroy the person who you're going to plop it in their hand, their hand. You yeah, know? you're like tossing it to them yeah. and saying, hey, catch this. Hot potato, hot Instead potato. Instead of like truth bullets of like bang, bang, bang or, or truth, truth cannons. cannons, which is like, what's the saying? Don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit. It's effective, but then there's no rabbit yeah, left. Yeah, exactly. So, and so also don't kill rabbits. In this whole concept, <laughs> the con- you like you likely really want to belong in the relationship. You likely want to belong and want to have a relationship or love or acceptance, whatever it is, so deeply that oftentimes your truth is being suppressed. And it's the courage component that I deeply believe that is going to start to unlock all of these things that you mentioned, babe, the feeling seen, the feeling understood and the feeling valued, because one component in all of that is is actually being heard and being heard in your truth and being able to deliver your truth in a relationship. And honestly, it takes two people to tangle when it comes tango when it comes to the truth. If you're not bringing your truth into the relationship, you're never really ever going to feel seen. You're never going to feel understood and you're never going to feel valued. And that's on you to some extent. And I think that that's a really important truth to bring into this conversation um, that I know personally, it's, it's a lot easier to suppress your truth. It's a lot easier to say, babe, 10 out of 10 on all accords. Yeah. The 8.5 has us now questioning okay what is that 8.5 why is it there the the truth underneath that matters because i haven't been vulnerable to the extent that you will need to be able to understand me i haven't been courageous enough yet to be able to have you have a 10 you can't honestly you can't see can't hear can't understand and can't value me if i'm not showing you the deepest parts of me to be seen and if i'm not expressing my truth so that's that's where that comes from not because of anything that you haven't done but more so my ownership in our relationship of where i haven't maybe spoken up well i also want to share this because i appreciate that ownership i do and i think that that's very valid but also for a lot of our listeners they don't have partners that actually want to go there truth so i would like to believe that i've always been open to learning you and i think the vulnerability and lack of vulnerability at times has made it challenging Mm -hmm. but i also get it because if i'm if you see that i'm super delicate about certain things of course you're going to dance around your truth sometimes Mm. to to protect me from any hurt because you don't want to hurt me of course and so at the end of the day you're right you have to what is vulnerability it is it is risking getting closer Mm -hmm. risking letting someone in risking hurt And whether it's a friend or a family member, an intimate partner, and I had a close friend of mine and I had a really, really, really uncomfortable, really, really, really challenging conversation recently where both of us got hurt. Yeah. But I, and I had my reaction afterwards of like, I knew I shouldn't have X, Y, Z. I knew I shouldn't have told him. I knew I shouldn't have told him the truth. I should have just let him go do his thing. And then I had the second moment, which was like, that's not growth. Mm -hmm. Like that's not going to help him or me. Because if I don't tell him my truth, even though it did hurt him, and it was definitely not a pebble, it was, and that's on me. I suppressed my pebbles. Eventually, they were bullets. I suppressed my bullets. Eventually, I threw a cannon. Yeah. And he threw a cannon back. That's the slippery slope that's, of the tangoing. You yeah. know, if we don't learn how to dance at like a slower rate, we're going to hurt ourselves on the dance floor. And then you're never going to want to tango again. Yeah. And that's where, and then you build walls to protect your heart, but they also keep you 
from falling in love, mm-hmm. right? And so anyways, I got hurt, he got hurt, and we both hurt each other, and neither one of us wanted that. But what that second moment told me was I either, the lesson is either, okay, I knew I shouldn't have been vulnerable, blah, blah, blah. The second lesson, it was like, no, that's not true. Here's what's true. When you grow and when you evolve and when you face uncomfortable truths within yourself and want to help others grow and want to have deep, meaningful relationships, it gets muddy and it it gets challenging. Mm. And sometimes people get hurt. But at least but at least it's pain and adversity and challenge for transformation. I don't want transactional relationships. Yeah, well so I was just gonna say some people don't have the emotional maturity to be able to handle that and so they end up leaving the relationship 100 percent because they it's so uncomfortable because and they don't know how to heal from the hurt and let the old phoenix of our relationship burn down to then rise anew into this new version Mm -hmm. and and emilia gave me an 8.5 for the understood nine for seen 10 for valued what if she's evolved and grown and i used to understand her at a 10 10 10 now she's evolved and grown, but I haven't relearned her. I haven't gotten to know the new mm. 2.8 version. Maybe I knew the 2.7 version when she was 27. And so I think that that's what a relationship is, is you individually and collectively grow the me's and the we's. And I would really love if our next episode, if your game would be on, instead of a transactional relationship, having a transformational relationship. I feel like that would be a very, very powerful episode. Mm. I am so sick and tired of transactional anything. Transaction, for those of you who don't know, it's $5 for this ice cream cone. That's a transaction. There's not a lot of transformation going on there. Mm -hmm. But $5 for this ice cream and let's have a deep conversation about life while we eat it together, that's a transformational experience. Mm -hmm. Or it can be, depending on what you're talking about, of course, and who you're with. And how fast the cone, obviously, melts. melts. (laughs) And in this case, it is black raspberry, which is the best flavor ever. We should go get some ice cream We have a place. uh, We should definitely do that. We should do that. We can do that tomorrow, actually, because it's this beautiful place. (gasps) Don't Uh, tell me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Spontaneity (laughs) and surprises. You didn't feel seen in that moment. <laughs> All right. So on that note, uh, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you so much. And at the end of the day, the 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 lesson is figure out how seen, understood, and valued you feel in your relationship and then determine whether or not that's on you for not being vulnerable and having courage. Mm-hmm. Or is that on your partner because they, quite frankly, haven't been paying attention. Yeah, They've been busy or overwhelmed or maybe they don't care. Yeah, And uh, maybe they don't want to go deeper yeah and i would also put in there um how much you feel hurt in your relationship because a lot of that is tied back to how courageous and vulnerable and expressive you're being in your relationship um so there's two to tango so if you want to grow your relationship if you want to live that honeymoon life we have a relationship talk just for you it is a free live virtual event and we host it now every thursday third thursday of every single month third it's thursday at 6 p.m eastern standard time and this topic that we're going to be diving into this month is how to not fall out of love with your life partner again people want to be in love but yet struggle to do the things that are required to really sustain and deepen that intimacy and connection you can love your partner but not be in love with them on the day-to-day and that's what this relationship talks event is created for and really really let that sink in listeners am i someone who i love my partner or someone who is deeply in love with my partner Because a lot of people fall out of love over time. A lot of people, we see that constantly. I know growing up, I looked around, I was like so scared of marriage (laughs) because I just saw so many roommates not, some of them didn't even like each other, never mind love each other, right? So anyways, we don't want that for any of you. And that's why this podcast exists. Yeah, the link is in the show notes for you to register. We would love to see you there. Please register, do so right now or miss out forever. (laughs) Uh, also we have relationship talks coaching this is what i wrote down building towards goals and dreams as a team building towards goals and dreams as a team if you feel like you're not doing the tango and on a team with your partner your future is suffering Mm -hmm. whether you know it or not we have seen 
these individuals and couples transform their entire futures. And we've been actually fortunate enough to have some clients that for years now, and the long-term transformation is wild. Yeah. I mean, their dreams have gotten way bigger. Their effort and their connection has gotten way better. They're so deeply in love in comparison. It is quite amazing, honestly. I would also venture to say their mental health has gotten a Definitely. lot better as well. Definitely. And their sense of belonging and all yeah. the things. So anyways, we hope that you reach out. You can email us or the link in the show notes to book directly on our calendar is there. As always, thank you so much for listening. This was episode number 76. It takes two to do the tango, which Emilia is dancing. For those of you not on YouTube, it was actually pretty great. <laughs> it was pretty great. So we're going to go get ice cream. And do the tango. And do the tango Well, getting ice cream. No, but uh, as always, it's not about you. The truth tango. The truth tango. Sorry. No, no, that's cool. It is cool. The truth tango. The truth tango. Do the truth tango with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing sexy back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, it's not about you or me. It's about the, the we. we. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. We love connecting with the Conscious Couples community. So please make sure you follow us on Instagram. I am at Evolve with Amelia and Alan is a Lazarus 88. Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we.